I am the one that the Lord has saved. I am the one that the Lord delivered. I am the Lord that the Lord has helped. I am the Lord the Lord has healed. I am the Lord, the one the Lord redeemed. I am the Lord, the one the Lord delivered. I remember how I used to be and I remember what my life is right now. I am the one that the Lord has saved and I have come to worship Him. And we are the ones the Lord has saved. We are the ones the Lord has delivered. We are the ones the Lord has rescued. We are the ones the Lord has redeemed. And we have come to say thank you. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and give thanks to the Lord and worship Him for the salvation of your soul. Give Him thanks for the prize that you carry. That prize is the precious blood of the Son of God. Give Him thanks. I give you thanks for the prize that I carry. The precious blood of the Son of God. I give you thanks for my redemption on the cross. I give you thanks for the perfect sacrifice, the perfect offering that was given, that was rendered for my salvation. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Lord, I give you thanks. I am the one that you have saved. I come to worship you. I come to exalt you. Jesus, it's all about you. Jesus, you are the name that calms my fears. Jesus, you are the name that calms the storms. Jesus, you are the name that heals and saves. Jesus, you are the name that delivers and rescues. Jesus, you are the name that transforms. Jesus, you are light, light over darkness. Jesus, you are life, life over death. Jesus, you are the way maker. Jesus. Jesus Jesus and so we come to tell you Lord that we are nothing without you but because of you we are all that you are what a privilege what a honor to be called sons of God and it took the son of God to come to make mere men sons of God like himself and what love is this that a man should lay down his life for his friends? But that was exactly what you did. What manner of love is this that slaves should know their master's business? But you have no longer called us slaves, we've called us friends. And we are friends of God because of the blood of Jesus that reconciled us back to the Father. Thank you for the package of salvation. It's a package of purity. It's a package of love. It's a package of holiness. It's a package of power. It's a package of deliverance. It's a package of healing. It's a package of wellness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you just go ahead and give thanks? Just go ahead and give thanks. If you understand your salvation, you will give thanks. You will give thanks. Your most precious asset is the blood of Jesus, your salvation. Can you give thanks for that asset? It's a spiritual asset. It's an asset that does not depreciate. Ordinary assets depreciate in value. This asset does not depreciate. It cannot depreciate. It cannot lose value. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me One day when I was lost Jesus died upon the cross I know it was the blood for me Thank you for the blood we plead the blood, we plead the blood, we plead the blood of Jesus over every life here. We plead the blood, we plead the blood, we plead the blood over every situation and circumstance represented by the people of God here. We plead the blood, we plead the blood over our today, we plead the blood over our tomorrow, we plead the blood over our rising, our lying down, our going out, our coming in. We plead the blood, we plead the blood of our jobs, our ministries, our careers, our businesses, our academics, our 
our pursuits, our marriages, our children, our grandchildren, our health, our finances. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Hey, the blood that flows from day to day, the blood that flows from age to age, it will never lose its power, for it can never lose its power. The blood. The blood. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, that's my confidence. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. That's my confidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get local on you? I want me wrong back and one lay keke. I want me wrong back and one lay. Shugwa wag back and wale o jesu. Kila waje. Aju ashegulo. No music. Amen. It's a message. Hallelujah. Why do you think we are more than conquerors? The blood. What is your assurance of victory? The blood! Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. That's my confidence. Ah, that's my confidence. Actually, actually, you know what? The blood is my identity. I'm black on the physical, but my spirit man is red. Why? Smeared with the blood. I'm, I'm a red man, hallelujah. I'm smeared with the blood. Every believer is smeared with the blood. Somebody say, I'm smeared. You know, you, you, you know, you know what it means to be smeared. Ah, praise God. This is not the message of what it means to be smeared. Coffee, pa, oh, palara, you know, yeah, rub. Ah. Who went to primary school like I did? You know something they used to call pomade. Ah, when our mothers will rub pomade all over your body, every part of you shining, shining, shining. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a pomade of the spirit, it's called the blood. Rubbed all over. <laughs> Glory. Somebody shout the blood. So, Lord, with expectations in our hearts, we receive your word this morning. You are ministering already to us. We ask for more. In Jesus' name, amen. You may please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your greatest asset is the blood. Your greatest asset is your salvation. Don't lose it. Tell somebody, I'm not planning to lose it. So I'm not, I'm not going to lose it. Hallelujah. Today I'm sharing a word of title, realities, realities, realities. What do you mean by realities? Things that are occurring, things that are happening, events that are taking place right now that are a fact. They are events that are existing, they are present with us. Hallelujah. So a reality is something that is a matter of fact. It is something that you can see, you can experience, you can handle, you can relate with because it is real, it is happening. Now, we have a number of facts that we shall be looking at today. The number one fact is this, the end is here. The end is here. The end has come. The end has come. Hallelujah. I need to be careful so that they won't say I have a H factor. You know H factor. Those who have H factor will call end, end. No, it's not end. It's end. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the end is here. Hallelujah. The end is not coming. The end is is already here let's read the bible first peter chapter 4 and verse 7 first peter chapter 4 and verse 7 but the end of all things is at hand but the end of all things is at hand be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer when did peter write this peter wrote this almost 2000 years ago and almost 2000 years ago he said the end of all things is at hand meaning the end of all things has come and see us Almost 2,000 years after. The evil of Peter's day are not the evil of our day. The evil of Peter's day, yes, there was sodomy. Yes, there was wickedness. There was deceit. There was uh, covetousness. Uh, there was persecution of, of, of believers in Christ. Uh, but not on a scale. The evil of their time uh, was not on a scale that we are seeing today. Hallelujah. The evil of their time 
is child's play compared to what we're seeing today. So the end is here. That's a reality. So are you living with the end in view? Are you living such that you know that everything can end now? And when we say end there, we're not talking about the world ending. Understand that. In actual fact, in the real sense of the word of God, the Holy Bible, this world will not end. But this world is going to transmute. It's going to undergo a transformation and a new earth will come out of the old earth. Amen. Bible scholars here, you, you relate with that. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. As far as the church age is concerned, which is where we are right now, the end of this age is the rapture of the saints and the rapture of Jesus Christ. Study on Matthew chapter 24 and so on. You will see that uh, every event or symbol that shall typify the end are already in place. They've been happening long before now. Hallelujah. Are you living with the end in view? Am I living with the end in view? Because the things going on around us suggest that the end is here. Another fact is this. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. The mystery of iniquity or the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. You hear some things, you listen to the news and you wonder, how can somebody do that? How can you take your own child and dismember that child? You cut up that child into pieces you examine the parts the kidneys the liver the pancreas of your own child the mystery of iniquity is already at work let's open our bibles to second thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7 you know the regular king james says for the mystery of uh, iniquity is already at work and him that let it will let until he's taken out of the way let's read from the passion the Passion Translation says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already active. When did Paul write this? AD 65, AD 66, AD 67. Where are we? AD 2021. Almost 2,000 years ago. The mystery of iniquity was working then. The mystery of iniquity is working now. You, you know, there's something in medical sciences that they call mutation. By the time there's a mutation that takes place, uh, an, a, an organism receives uh, more strength. It becomes more potent. It becomes more destructive. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you're in doubt, let's just look at the malaria parasite. Malaria parasite, 1973. Quinine. 74, quinine. 75, quinine. Chloroquine, nevaquine. You know, chloroquine phosphate generally will take care of it. Up to the 80s. By the time the 80s got here, people will take anti-malaria, the same never queen, chloroquine, whatever queen you like to call it, and they begin to itch. There was no itching in the 70s, do you remember? Me, well, I don't know about you, maybe you're a special breed. But Mio, in the 70s, there was no itching. You take chloroquine, no itching. You take never queen, no itching. In the 80s, itching began. For some people, even their nails will itch. Nail. Me, I don't know how nail can itch. I said, that's why I said for some people. They will say every part of my body is itching. Even when they give them peritin, remember now, my local doctor colleagues in the house, don't mind medical doctors, stay with our own medicine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Please mind them, or mind medical doctors. I was just kidding. But what am I saying? The mystery of iniquity at work then has gone through several stages and levels of mutation hallelujah ah it is terrible out there right now hmm. so let's read again second thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7 for the mystery of lawlessness is already active but the one who prevails will do so until he's separated from out of the mist but the one who prevails <laughs> but the one who prevails <laughs> but the one who prevails who is the one who prevails Old King James says, but the one who lets, who is the one who prevails? The church. The church of Jesus is here. So the mystery of lawlessness or the mystery of iniquity cannot be unleashed full blast because there's a restraining factor. The restraining factor is the church. And when the church is now raptured, caught away upon the glorious appearing of Jesus in the clouds, 
because the rapture of the saints is not the same as the second coming of the Lord the first coming of the Lord was he coming as Savior then he was called Jesus the second coming of the Lord will be him coming as judge hello but the rapture is not the second coming yet the rapture is part of the plans to prepare for the second coming because when he's coming the second time he'll be coming with an array of people an array of those who will not go through the judgment that is bringing hallelujah so the mystery of lawlessness is already active but there is one that prevails the church for now but that mystery is already active how that mystery would have wished to be more destructive if not for the church guess what so the strategy of the devil therefore let's attack this church let's attack these believers let's attack them so that this hindrance can be removed and we can do what we want to do hello church am i making some sense let's attack their prayer lives let them dislike to pray let's attack their, their christian commitment let them dislike things of god let them dislike church let, let them dislike the bible let them find the bible strange to read let's attack them let this restraining force be removed how pleased would you be if that were to happen it's a simple question what are we to do stand in our place so that when the winds blow it may sway us but we are standing when the storms come you know those big trees the way they respond to the wind they do that i even understand some years back i did a a study on the Burj Khalifa and uh, then I understood further the mysteries of engineering engineering is a wonder why God is a wonder the one who gives wisdom to, to men is a wonder in the calculations they did because engineering is all about calculations in the calculations they did I'm talking about structural engineering civil and structural engineering in the calculations they did they allowed for the building to move there is an established uh, circumference for that building to move to as the building responds uh, to wind but we wouldn't see the building move but if that building does not move in response to strong winds it will break hallelujah <laughs> so the winds are blowing the building uh, is uh, responding but still standing that's you that's me hallelujah okay let's go on so the mystery of iniquity is another is already at work that is another reality don't forget that there is despondency everywhere you know what it means uh, to have a feeling of despondency it's a feeling of hopelessness it's like a feeling of emptiness nothing else count there is nothing that motivates you it's like oh, there's nothing else I can do whatever they like let, 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 whatever happens let it happen I can't come and go and kill myself and somebody sang a song I can't kill myself oh. I can't kill myself <laughs> out of despondency so there is despondency everywhere this feeling of hopelessness and that is the feeling out there in the world and you must not allow that to catch up with you in the church you must be a Christian 24 7 a believer in Christ 24 7 hallelujah what they do must not get to you so that you become you, be you begin to do what they are doing rather you must influence them <laughs> To do what you do hello church we are salt salt influences its environment wherever it is introduced that is salt that has not lost its savour. that is salt that has not lost its saltiness if salt loses its saltiness it can't function like that don't lose your savour. don't lose your saltiness 
When the devil isolates you, your saltiness is going small, small. One week out of church, two weeks out of fellowship of believers, three weeks no Bible study, five weeks no Bible study, salt your own law. Your salt is going. And when salt is no longer tasting like salt, if it is introduced into the meal, makes no impact, has no dif makes no uh, difference in the meal, has no impact in the meal. Amen. Because everything is just bland. I was discussing with a married woman the other day, and she said, her husband is uh, hypertensive. And I said, I hope you are listening to your doctors. You know, you are the wife, you cook his meals, make sure, uh, you know, you reduce his sodium intake, his salt intake, and so on. He said, uh, who? The day I removed salt from it, he fought me. He said, what kind of nonsense food is this that you have cooked? It has no taste. She said, uh, it's because of what the doctor told you, I'm simply coming. He said, no, 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 cook no more food for me. I said, ask him whether he wants to last. I said, imagine she's young. <laughs> Tell him, hallelujah. If you know you want to eat proper food, then believe God for sound health so that you can eat anything. She said, Abolan is my wife. When I go on my eating, whatever, whatever, you know, on the, uh, you know all those... Uh, where was? Hallelujah. Where were today? Where were two days after, you know, with some nice cup of coffee or whatever it is? Hallelujah. And I said, You want some milk? She doesn't eat pastry. Even meat. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be telling you. But she be, I can tell them. <laughs> I'm the one that eats meat and so on and so on. But she will say, Hmm. When you are exercising and burning off calorie, like somebody that they gave work to, let me translate that in Yoruba. Nobody is there, so they don't know if they want to follow you to be doing what they are doing. When you are burning it off, they are not there. Oh. So if you know that you want to eat everything, <laughs> you must be ready to do the work of everything. But what are we talking about? There's despondency everywhere. Please open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ And because this was happening out there For those who are not saved At that time you were without Christ Being clients or being aliens I beg your pardon From the commonwealth of Israel And strangers from the covenants of promise It is bad not to be in Christ Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel They are not partakers of the covenant of Israel We are partakers of the covenant of Israel As believers in Christ Strangers from the covenants of promise The covenants of promise are not strange to us We are partakers of those covenants Having no hope Despondency No hope And without God in the world That's a dangerous way to live How can you live without hope? How can you live without God in the world? You know why the gospel of Jesus Christ is different from any other message? Whether from Buddha whether from uh, agnostics, whether from uh, uh, syncretists, whether from, uh, you know, animists. This one gives hope. The gospel gives hope. In the gospel there is hope. Hallelujah. In the gospel there is hope. Amen. In some of those other religions, no hope. They don't even know where they are going. Somebody even said he does not know where he's going. And billions of people are following him on earth today. Hmm. Matthew 24, 8 to 12. Despondency everywhere. From verse 8, Matthew 24 and verse 8, what does it say? All these are the beginning of sorrows because before then, they began to talk about the fact that, uh, you know, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and so on and so on. Ah, when you hear nation rising against nation, don't think of Russia annexing Crimea. Don't think of uh, Iraq, Saddam Hussein, uh, Hussein uh, addressing, where did he address the other day? Kuwait. Iraq annexing Kuwait. No, 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 no. That's not nation. You are reading the English. The Greek, which is the original, says ethnos. 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 Ethnos will arise against ethnos. That means ethnic group will arise against ethnic group. TV people will arise against uh, uh, Nupe people. Amen. If uh, people will arise against Modakeke people. Ethnos. Do you understand now? All those things have been happening for long. So, so the end can be any time. Let's read on from verse 8 now. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I Meaning all those things that have been happening for long, they are the beginnings of labor pain. Sorrow there is labor, labor pain, labor pang. I'm a man. I've never given birth before, so I can only describe it. 
to the best of my mental ability. It is a woman that has undergone labor before that can describe it. No, you cannot. <laughs> Sister Bissola, you are about to. Hallelujah. Your husband must be there. When is going to happen? Let's face the message. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. It happened to the disciples. And then shall many be offended. It's still going to happen. And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax old. There will be despondency because iniquity will abound. And that's happening right now. At times you talk to some people about the need for them to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and be saved. And they say, eh, one pastor, dear, one pastor. Is it the question of pastor you are discussing with them? But listen, because they keep seeing failures, the devil makes them focus only on that. Because he doesn't want the number to increase. He doesn't want the kingdom to increase. So he keeps distracting them, turning them away from the kingdom. That is another reality. Another reality is this. Parenting today is largely defective. Do you agree with that? That's a reality. Amen. I said largely. So mark my words. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not being st stereotypical here. So there's no stereotype here. I said parenting today is largely defective. Largely. Thank God for those who are doing it right. But majority of parents are not doing it right. They have westernized parenting. They have westernized parenting. Many in our generation have westernized parenting. I will never forget the story that a friend of mine told me years ago. He was in the UK then, you know, his parents didn't live in the UK and so on. And he was doing his masters. This was many years ago. And he said that the, 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 the pastor of his parents, his parents I used to attend a Baptist church in England then. And uh, he said one day somebody came to ask for the pastor in the vicarage. And he said, uh, I, don't, I can't remember the name he mentioned. He looked at the pastor's son and said, is Tim around? Re referring to the boy's dad. And instead of the boy saying, yes, he's around, he said, excuse me, sir, you mean my father? That's a white boy. He said, excuse me, sir, you mean my father? He said, yes, your father. Oh, my father's at home. He was taken aback because he expected to say, yeah, Tim, Tim, yeah, you just go right in. Because uh, even parents are on first name basis from their children. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to laugh in Spanish. <laughs> uh, when we are playing, we are playing. You know, you and your children you can be playing. And you can call you <laughs> Vasati. <laughs> That's playing. But when we are not playing, when everything is serious, ah. Lenwe from your mouth. A meeting. Ah. <laughs> you know, but so so the error, the reality today is we have succeeded in westernizing parenting. Because you think uh, anything white skinned people do must be correct, says who? Haven't you seen how ah, time? Something happened recently. There's someone I know. Um, he's a surgeon. He's a gynecologist. Something happened. Um, he had a patient that had uh, twin conception. You know, and it was a precious conception, meaning the woman had waited for quite a while. And um, along the line, like uh, five months into the pregnancy, one of the one of the twins died in the woman's womb. But thank God they were in separate sacks. You understand? So, so the management team felt, listen, let's just push and push and push till when we can get to a time that is safe enough to bring out the living child. But they had to keep the dead one from infecting the environment and from even destroying the mother's life. Uh, septicemia and all those things. So they managed, managed, managed until they felt it was safe enough, you know, to, to bring out the baby, the living one, surgically. 
and they did and it was successful but the pressures were too much on the host you know the host that is the mother and she gave up so they wanted precious children finally one made it but the wife was no more how do you think that man will feel and I looked and I said ah I said but I know that if this were to be in the Western world that that dead one fetus can be removed surgically and uh, the place will be closed back up and the living one will continue to full term and somebody said have you forgotten the surgery that was performed by a Nigerian doctor how that you know he went in operated upon a fetus that had a disorder and planted the fetus back and the child you know grew and the child was born he said uh, he's the man's elder sister mentioned the person and I know the elder sister that yes that is Alice in the body jar now yeah uh, 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 a bro a bro so so and so person I don't want to mention her name that uh, maybe you know her I say yes a bro hello she a Nigerian so we are we white-skinned people when that Nigerian did that that's the point I want to make because people think anything white people do that's the best says who but there is a spirit in man does not say but there's a spirit in a white man does not say there's a spirit in a black so the blackness let's talk to ourselves pardon me our heads must be correct you know i said pardon me there's nothing like our heads must be correct but pardon me our heads must be correct we must know what we're doing we're not inferior i must not allow the environment to condition our minds along the pathways of inferiority no say no be giving to excellence keep pushing in spite of the limitations around us hallelujah so parenting today is largely defective children can do whatever they don't fear anybody their parents talk to them and say hey, so what you know look at Proverbs 22 6 and then can you help me put that text on the screen but Proverbs 22 6 says train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he will not depart from it so parenting today has become likely defective okay can we have that text on the screen there's some issues I want us to consider practically mm. I hope it's clear here but the screen in front of me is uh, small so what will your children say about you all of us let's read together what will your children say about you as you mean any of your children is called in your absence to say something about you what will they say note they may be told to speak in confidence that is the interviewer will not tell you whatever they say about you meaning they are given a confidential report about their parents let's hear some of the things that these children are saying listen to this number one a 15 year old girl said i prefer sniper to my mom it is better for me to drink sniper and die than face the anger of my mom and she said my father is in his own world another 15 year old girl said my mom <laughs> she doesn't exist i have nothing to do with her even though we live in the same house so i tell her nothing she does not and will not know anything about me no matter how much she proves at what age 15 realities next one a nine-year-old said i can tell my parents anything and they will believe me whether it is true or not they don't even know that at times i lie to them a nine-year-old if they try to doubt what i'm saying i will just pretend as if i want to cry and my mom will say leave him alone please he tells the truth and my dad will just keep quiet guess what I almost died when I was about to give back to him. Were you there in the labor room? You want to kill him? Phileo, leave him alone. He doesn't tell lies. A 17 year old boy said, I, I'd rather die than tell my parents that I'm broke 
or about any problem I'm having. I made this decision since I noticed that they will use whatever I told them to taunt me any day they decide to have issues with me. Parents, let's take note. They are so insensitive to my feelings. I've gone through a lot in life for the past two years, including being accused of stealing, for which I was almost killed. But my parents knew nothing about any of these things. What if they had killed him? Another one. Yet another teenager said, my parents are toothless bulldogs. Realities. They can shout till tomorrow, but it doesn't move me because I know that it ends there. A criminal in the making. They can't do anything to me. I know my ways with them. I say a criminal in, in waiting. Moreover, they will not like me to expose their secrets and dirty deals to the whole world. Can you see? Realities. Some say realities. Things are happening. Who is the difference? We should be the difference. But unfortunately, some of these things are happening with us. Realities. Let me read one more. Listen to this eight-year-old girl. My dad cannot beat me. Even if he shouts at me, he will later come and start begging me. My mom can shout for Africa. And even beats me at times. But that is only if my dad is not around. If he's around, he will not allow her to touch me or shout at me. Uh, hmm. They will have wood for firewood. We'll just stop there. Amen. I'm sure maybe some of us have even seen that before, you know. So parenting today is like the defective. No, no question about that. So train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. There are seeming alternatives, another reality. There are seeming alternatives to God in today's world. Seeming alternatives. That they look like alternatives to God. Like, I can't be God. Somebody even said that years ago I was trying to uh, to preach to her you know I don't want to mention her name we were on the flight together and uh, she said my husband is atheist and I'm agnostic I looked at the two atheist that one says there's no God agnostic it depends on whatever the situation is that will make us know whether there is God or not and God will be available in that situation otherwise there's no God what proof do you even have that there's God I looked I said this case is a special case and our father-in-law is a known satanist I'll mention his name so it is running in the family what kinds of children do you think they're gonna give birth to realities so there are seeming alternatives to God for the ungodly in society today. And guess what? The devil brings a coloration, a coloration of materialism and material comfort, physical comforts. And so by the time you are trying to preach the kingdom of God and salvation to them, <laughs> I even had a case, somebody said, all this preaching you are preaching are you broke is it money you need come and come and take money eh? and don't uh, stress yourself because the person assess the person maybe from head to toe maybe she was already like that of jacob can you understand <laughs> so just, just assessed and said hey, it's money so the devil uses uh, material comfort material wealth as, as the barometer to gauge that, listen, it's because they don't have money. Some will even say, well, 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 uh, the guy that is not born again, he has all the basics of life. He has more than enough and is living fine. And me that I am reading the Bible, I am praying and so on and so on, I'm always hungry. I think uh, this gospel is not working. Who told you? that the gospel is for you to have material wealth. Where did you hear that from? 
Who told you? He shall be called Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. Salvation number one is for eternity to be guaranteed. Having eternal life, the overflowing life of God. Hallelujah. Having your name written in the Lamb's book of life. So that in the final analysis, it will not happen to us like it happened to the rich man in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Incidentally, the story of a rich man and Lazarus was not a parable. Read that place very well. It was not a parable. Jesus Christ gave a real life account. He said there was a man, a certain rich man. You know? So there was a certain rich man, there was Lazarus. Lazarus was poor, he was a beggar. The rich man lived sumptuously. He had all going for him as far as the standards of this world are concerned. Nice cars, nice houses, good children, everything good. But he did not know God. And dogs, dogs will come and lick the sauce of Lazarus. And it was the dustbin of the rich man that Lazarus ate from. But when Lazarus died, angels somebody say angels carried him into the bosom of abraham because that was salvation that was the plan as at that point in time why the messiah had not shed his blood yet she had to be abraham's bosom amen the rich man also died that's what the bible says and in hell he lit up his eyes the bible doesn't say this man also died and just carried him mm -mm, angel carry on that for that one, for the rich man, who is the A? Not mentioned. Hallelujah. So that is the message of salvation. But listen. All things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Since he's a good father, he will look after you. But you don't come and say, because I want wealth. Because I want to get pregnant. Because I want to get married. They say I should give my life to Jesus. Whoever told you that, preach the wrong gospel to you. That if you want to have a husband, give your life to Christ. If you want to have a wife, give your life to Christ. Memuna too. You see, see, she has five children for five different men. She's not even fine. She's not, she's not pretty. But men are always pursue her. And she's not born again. She, she's Memuna too. Two Ambalis. They, 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 they have houses everywhere, but they are not born again. They have children all over the place and they're not born again. It's not having Christ that makes you have a child. Some problems are even wrong fundamentally with the gospel that we preach at times. And that's because we have half-baked believers all over the place. He's looking for disciples. He's not looking for half-baked Christians. Realities. Hallelujah. I hope you will greet me after service. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. So there are similar alternatives uh, to God for the ungodly right now. Psalm 73 from verse 12. It says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. Because if they have material wealth, people think uh, they must be doing something right. And I must the, the, mean that I'm poor. I'm the one that has a problem. Says who? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. The righteous man was saying, said i've served god in vain i've lived holy in vain verily i've cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency for all the day long have i been plagued and chastened every morning every morning maybe it's hunger pangs that wake him up every morning maybe it's the landlord coming to bang on his door you know if i say i will speak thus behold i shall offend against the generation of thy children when i thought to know this what's going on it was too painful for me until i went into the sanctuary of god then understood i their end surely Thou didst set them in slippery places. The people you think are godless, but are wealthy, he said he set them in slippery places. When a place is slippery, what's going to happen? If somebody attempts to walk there, the person will fall. Thou castest them down into destruction. Do you see that? How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. So you don't take the meaning of life from the ungodly because of material possession hallelujah neither do you en embrace the gospel of poverty because uh, you you want to be holy there's something called ascetism 
Ascetics believe in harsh treatment of the body so that they can please God. Who needs your sacrifice? If you die, you die. Twe. Harsh treatment of the body at your, to your own detriment. Why? Only one sacrifice was what the father was looking for and he got it in his son. Amen. What we are to do now is to enjoy from where we did not reap. Eh? Pastor, that is it. That's the New Testament. You know what that means? Grace. Grace is you benefiting from the work you did not do. Somebody else did the work. The work you are to do now is the work of faith. You believe, you receive it. Hallelujah. You believe, you receive it. But in doing the work of faith, you believe, and then the action, the corresponding action of your believing goes along with it. It's simple. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Is there any beneficiary of grace in the house? Hallelujah. Do you know what grace means? What grace means? Uh, grace. <laughs> grace is what makes them make a mistake in your favor. <laughs> they will make a mistake in your favor <laughs> because of grace. Hallelujah. It will be a mistake, but <laughs> we've done it. We can't call it back. I give it to him. No, no. Hallelujah. It's called grace. There were others there who were qualified, but grace overqualified you above them. It's called grace. You didn't labor for it. You didn't know about it but they considered you for it it's called grace those better than you those more trained than you they were there but they they kind of overlooked them to come to you it's called grace it's called grace i've gone ahead of myself but it doesn't matter it's called grace it's called grace hmm. so no alternative to jesus because those who are out there seem to have alternatives to Jesus so that's why they can live anyhow that's why they can live with a man that they are not married to a woman can live with a man that she's not married to a man can live with a woman that she's not married to I'm coming maybe I'll have time to talk about the story of Chidima you know I'm coming I'm coming <laughs> hallelujah praise God the gospel another reality the gospel has become popular but disrespected that's another reality my time is almost gone the gospel has become popular but disrespected you know you know the gospel is now quite popular growing up in the 70s i was born in lagos so we had uh, nta 10 and then there was uh, wmbc wmbs that was channel 3 so that's where ibado is so turn to ibado channel 3 and there was one man his name was Reverend Timothy in your dad. How many remember? And can you call Go Ye, Go Ye? I would look at him and say, ah, Who is this one? What's wrong with him? What is he saying? Go Ye, Go Ye, Go As Why? The gospel was not popular then. In the 80s, some of us started hearing Benson in Dahosa. Benson, remember now? Ah, Benson in Dahosa. Because normally it was our priests in our mainline churches that we knew, you know, with their long cassocks. And they were disconnected from us. They were very disconnected from us. In fact, the way they spoke their grammar was different from the, oh, lo, 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 lo you know. So, <laughs> and they, they spoke in King James. You know, so, so we thought God was King James. But in the 80s, we say, which one is this one? With flowing agbada, embroidering from top down. And the man be talking, talking, talking. Ah, ah. So we, we wanted to watch him, not because we wanted to hear him. It was the theatrics. She you understand? You know, there's nobody you can talk to. You say, Adamu can be in Kano. I will be in Benin. Nonsense. I, I would say, ah, I like this man. <laughs> Even though we're not listening to the gospel. But the gospel gradually became very popular. Popular. And then, very early 80s, well, late 70s, for some of us, it depends on your age, you know I'm a young person. SU, the term SU became very popular. How many remember? SU, SU, SU. We go to people and say, take a call now, it's good for you. Say, no, 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 say, oh, SU, SU. But gradually, the fire and the intensity got stronger got stronger and the gospel became very popular 
in our cities today, in our cities, there is hardly anyone who has not heard the preaching of the gospel. Radio has made it popular. Television has made it popular. Am I right or wrong? But it is one thing for the gospel to be popular. It is another thing for the power of the gospel to be seen at work. So people hear the gospel. They can speak our lingo. My wife and I have a friend. <laughs> she knows the truth. <laughs> but she's not ready. She goes to a mainline church and that's fine. Okay, that's fine. But she will say, I cannot do this, you're born again. That's why I said, can you see the difference? Because the born again phrase is not a phrase of man it was jesus that said except a man but born again he cannot see the kingdom of god so that is not coming from man it's coming from the mouth of the lord and she would say praise god hallelujah <laughs> praise god glory to god you think she's born again she knows our lingo but she's not you know it's so easy praise god you know when unbelievers <laughs> i used to know one man he's even an elijah <laughs> you know how he greets me I love my pastor. I love my. <laughs> he has never been to our church before. Has, I don't know where I became his pastor, <laughs> but he picks up things. You know, people say it. So the gospel has become popular, but highly disrespected because they will find uh, stories to buttress it. Uh -uh, that uh, man you call pastor, the other day they said uh, they saw him somewhere. With one, ah, didn't you read the story? There's another one here. The one that uh, beat his wife. The, the one that they come up with all kinds of stories. And guess what? You know the in thing as far as unbelievers because ah, you two, you bet I <laughs> your pastor was by jet. I always ask them. I say, how many pastors in Nigeria have jets? You are a fool if you bet that they'll, they'll use your tie to buy jet. Do you think jet is small play? Some people cannot maintain. G wagon. Those cars are complex cars, oh. G wagon. I'm too high. Prado Jeep. One day, somebody went to Coscaris with his BMW. He just bought BMW 2006. He bought a five series BMW. He went for servicing. It was still under warranty. The servicing cost of servicing there was 170 thousand, something like that. So by the time warranty expired, and he had to go and be paying money, he went to Coscaris. They gave him his bill, 500 and something thousand. Ah, he said, he doesn't have that much. They said, then the car will sleep here. But for every day of sleeping, they will charge the car money for sleeping. Per day. I think it was 30 something thousand per day. Then he said, wait, wait, wait. I can't afford 500 and something, it's 30 something thousand. You're not going to charge. Now you're not talking of aeroplane. Aeroplane. Park, you pay parking. I know an FBO. FBOs are fixed base operatives. FBOs are, are the ones that provide private hangar services for private planes that are owned not by commercial airlines. I know what goes on in that industry. It's a lot of money. In Nigeria, we can count on the tips of our fingers how many pastors have jets. I'm not making a case for those that have jets. So I'm simply saying how many. You too, as you are sitting and hearing this, count in your head how many, how many, how many. If they put me in the number, <laughs> I park on the roof of a church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read some scriptures again. Titus chapter 1 from verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers. I wanted to change the plugs of my car one day. The mechanic said, it's eight plugs. I said, ah, ah. Kilo day. He said, that's his eight plugs. He now took picture and sent it to me, the eight. He spread it on the table. He said, I said, see, somebody that has to <laughs> believe God for eight plugs is the one that will buy an aeroplane. <laughs> aeroplane, your crew, your crew, you pay them in dollars. You pay them every month. <laughs> <laughs> Maintenance. <laughs> there are different levels of checks. C check, D check, different levels of checks. In fact, aviation fuel. <laughs> Somebody one day, you know, he just died. I won't say more than that. He had a golf spring, golf, golf spring, 550. In a year, the plane may not go anywhere. But every day, bills are mounting and he, and he pays in dollars. 
One day, another plane was trying to park in the hangar, and they clipped the wing of the Gulfstream 550 in error. You know, the wing, they clipped it. To fix the wing, the company, the owner of the jet that clipped the wing of $40,000. If Okada scratches you, do you <laughs> Oh, let's read these scriptures. Uh, huh. The gospel has become popular but disrespected. Why? No character. No fruits. Where is Christ in all of this? It's just the ideas of men. Titus 1.10 For there are many unruly and vain talkers. Many, many unruly, vain talkers, empty talkers. They can talk. And not only that, and deceivers, uh, there are many. We have to be careful. So you know some people, they, all, they always go from house to house. When I say house to house, it's not capturing it. Because it's a Yoruba word in my mind that I'm translating to house to house. Ojule to Ojule. They go from place to place. As you are going from Ojule to Ojule, be careful. Vain talkers, deceivers, cheats, frauds. They're all over. Be careful the Odule you enter. Hallelujah. Stay where you find the truth and grow with the truth. Is, is that, does that make sense to us? Hallelujah. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. There are some pastors that will tell a woman who is having issues with conception that if I sleep with you, you, you will get pregnant. And it is... Holy Ghost conception. You've heard that before? Hallelujah. And they are pastors. They are criminals. Odano. You know, what's the English word for Odano? Odano. Ah. And people go there. And people know those things. And everybody puts on an air as though it's just normal, you know. Ha. Ah. I don't want to take your time with my stories. But it's clear to me that I can't finish this, so I'm just going to end here. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake, that means for money's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of the own, said, the Cretans, because Titus was Paul's letter to Titus, who was the first bishop of a church in Crete. So that's why he says the Cretans. The Cretans are always liars, evil be slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth unto the pure. All things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Excuse me, what kind of book is the book we just read, Titus? What kind of book is it? An epistle. What's an epistle? A letter that was written to a Christian. In fact, this was not just a regular epistle. It was an episcopal epistle. It was an epistle written to a pastor. To the bishop of a church and it chronicled what was going on with believers in that region of the world at that point in time how then will the message they preach carry impact because physician heal thyself it is such as I have that I will give you amen and talk is cheap do you know something such as I have is what I give. Even when I say what is right, if I'm not doing what is right, it won't affect you. What I say won't affect you. It's a spiritual law. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we need to be careful. I want to round up this message. There's a culture of compromise out there. And the culture of compromise has a chorus. What is the chorus of the culture of compromise? It does not matter. That's the chorus. It does not matter. Pastor, it doesn't matter. I live with my boyfriend. You know, we are going to get married maybe in another two years or three years or four years when he's ready, but it doesn't matter. I'm a believer. It doesn't matter. Pastor, I, I, you see, when I smoke weed, I don't disturb anybody. I go into my, my room. I shut the door. I do my business. And uh, in fact, 
By the time I start reading, everything goes in. After I smoke my weed. So it helps me to concentrate. Culture of compromise. So that's the culture that is prevalent in society today. A culture of sexual immorality. A culture of sin. A culture of wickedness. Can, can you help us with that video? Let's, let's quickly see that video. That's weed. Some people are here. If they drink coffee, coffee, it will knock them out. No more coffee. Some people, if they perceive the smell of cigarettes, they will vomit. It nauseates them. Those young girls were smoking weed in their hemp. If you, if you take a drag, your head will make fade. <laughs> you will think your, your person, that is your spirit, is about to get out of your body and to enter another planet. Those are all girls, by the way. Did you see any, any boy there? But those are the things happening in society. It's a reality. There's a battle raging out there for the souls of young people. But young people are reflecting the lives of old people. What are we doing? What has our generation done to produce this? And what are we even doing right now? that will shape the future reality let us bow down our heads to pray hmm. is there a future yes there is is there work to do a lot is there a way out yes there is has the Lord showed us what to do yes he has are we doing what he has asked us to do maybe not maybe in part maybe not totally so do we have some repentance to do yes we do do we have to make up our minds to do what is right yes we have to if that is the case then let's stand to our feet let's stand to our feet realities i'll continue some other time realities can you ask the lord for his help his help beyond where we are. Can we ask the Lord for His mercy? His mercy unto forgiveness. Can we receive help for the future? Can we receive help for young people? Can we receive help to stand on our own watch and to do that which God has committed unto our hands? If you are a parent, you have a ministry. If you are a grandparent, you have an, another ministry. So receive grace to be effective in your ministry and not to fail. What legacy are we leaving behind for those coming behind us? Please pray and ask for the help of God. Now, x-ray your own life. 
the way you are living now who can you recommend your lifestyle to who can you recommend your lifestyle to if you know you cannot recommend your lifestyle to anyone or if you know you cannot present the video of your life to this church then it tells us you have amendments to make so in your heart make the amendment you need to make right now this is between you and your God make the amendment you need to make right now make amends make amends make amends make amends make amends make amends in the name of Jesus make amends but there's forgiveness with God that he may be feared if he were to mark iniquity no man will stand but there's forgiveness with him that he may be feared can we receive forgiveness wherever we have failed wherever we missed the mark in the name of jesus can we receive grace to stand in our places and to live for the lord as he expects of us to live in purity in holiness yeah that we will live to please the lord that his presence will be comfortable in us and around us and around us can we receive uh, the sharpening of the Spirit of the Lord for us as a branch of the body of Christ? That this assembly will be associated with the purity of the gospel and with the power of the gospel. That men and women here will love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our might, with all our strength with every tissue of our beings every fiber of our beings will love the lord that will hate sin will hate evil and unrighteousness in the name of jesus so lord you know every man that is here do an x-ray of our hearts and lord let that which is your will and your will is for us to be reconciled unto you so we receive reconciliation 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 in the name of jesus reconciliation you may be seated you may be seated all eyes shut all heads bowed you have to put the devil to shame right now you just have to silence the devil it is decision time you know you know in your heart that the way you've been living has not been pleasing the lord guess what he's ready for you now it's decision time and you must Put the devil to shame just disgrace the devil he doesn't want you to respond to this he doesn't want you to raise your hand he doesn't want you to say you are you are voting for jesus no he doesn't want you to say any of those things he wants you to keep quiet so that he can destroy you ultimately because he steals he kills and he destroys but if you are saying jesus i'm making up my mind i'm turning my back to the devil and i'm turning my face to you Today is my day of decision. Today is my day of salvation. Raise up your right hand. Raise up your right hand. You are putting the devil to shame. You are making up your mind and you are saying, I put the devil to shame today and I'm confessing Christ as well. Raise up your right hand. And once you raise the hand, keep it up. Yes, I see. Are there two hands? If you are raising the hand, raise the hand now. No, put the devil to shame now. This is the time to do it. I stopped. I was doing something else and I had that prompting. This is the time to do it. And maybe you're watching online and you know that the way you are going, you are going down the hill because you are going very fast and a collision which will lead to destruction is imminent. This is rescue hour for you. You can turn around. I see your hand, my brother. You can turn around. Who else? This morning, it's a decision that puts the devil to shame. Turn your back to the devil turn your face to Jesus he will accept you okay just stand to your feet and put your hand across your chest I'm not gonna call you out we don't even have time to do that put your hand across your chest as you stand to your feet and say Jesus it's all about you now I embrace you and you alone I turn my back to sin and to Satan and I receive grace to live your life your life the God kind of life and your life fills me up for the rest of my days and i'm planted in you never to be rooted out in jesus name so let the assurance of salvation and the breath of the holy ghost come upon my brother here and who else that i may not see in the name of jesus and those who might be doing this online that your breath and your power will rest upon them and you will keep them in your wheel for the rest of their days in jesus name amen You'll be told what to do. God bless you. God bless you. You'll be told what to do. If you pray that prayer online, indicate someone will contact you even now. 
Father, we give thanks. If you are sick in your body, stand up and be healed. That's the instruction. Stand up and be healed. Yes, stand up and be healed. And say, I'm healed, and then take your seat. Say, I'm healed, and then take your seat. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you. June is ending this week. But it will end on a note of victory. It will end on a note of testimonies. It will end on a note of glory. It will end on a note of power. So in the name of Jesus, I command the best of this month to be released unto us even now. So that between today and Wednesday 12 midnight, it shall be visitation after visitation after visitation after visitation. The weak will become stronger. Those who are prayerless will become people of prayer. Those who don't have time for the altar of the word will begin to discover realms and dimensions of revelation in the world that they have never seen before. Lord, let it begin now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we just give him thanks?